now we're going to talk about pulleys. So we talked about ideal ropes. Ideal ropes frequently go with ideal pulleys. And the ideal pulley is something that we'll return to later when we talk about rotation because it's an interesting situation to change one thing about this and see what happens. So the first definition of our ideal pulley is that there's no friction at the axle. And specifically why we say at the axle is that this point here is the axle. And the reason we say that is because theoretically friction is what makes the pulley turn with the rope, but you don't think of the friction as actually being a force that opposes anything. So if you want, you can just say kind of no friction, but really there is theoretically friction here turning the pulley, but it doesn't matter for the problem. For what we're doing right now, it doesn't matter if the pulley is actually turning or not. But the most important thing to realize is that you don't have any sort of like force of friction that's slowing things down. You just don't have that. The next thing is that the pulley is massless. And this kind of goes with the same arguments as before, that what we really want to do is just have the pulley redirect the rope. That's all we want. We don't want the pulley to change the tension in the rope. And if the pulley had mass, it kind of would, and you would have to think about friction then. So we'll do that in a couple of chapters, but we're not going to do that right now. So with this is the idea that the tension in the rope is not changing as it goes around the pulley. So we would say the tension here is all the same. It goes around the pulley and the tension keeps being the same. Think about that little ball and spring model that all of these atoms, all of these molecules are all stretching the spring in the same way throughout the entire rope. And the other thing that, you know, the rope is redirected. Don't overthink this. That in this case, my good old xy coordinates, I don't have any sag, right? I don't have any sag here, and this is just straight down in the negative y hat. So whatever it looks like the rope is doing, go with that. Don't try to think that there's anything subtle happening. So that's the ideal pulley case. Really, this is still just about the rope. The pulley is just redirecting. There's a couple of subtleties about this that I want to talk about that specifically comes in with acceleration constraints and if you have multiple pulleys. So you've seen a picture like this before when we had acceleration constraints. And we said, for instance, that in our xy coordinate system, we can call this block, which is accelerating to the right, that the acceleration of A will equal, say, plus A x hat. And that then, if I want to talk about the acceleration of B, if block A goes to the right, block B goes down. So I'm going to call this negative A y hat. And I'm saying A because these are literally the same A. This was your acceleration constraint. OK. But now, forces work a little bit different. Your tension in the rope is pulling block A to the right. Your tension in block B is pulling it up. So what these vectors are doing. And again, the rope can pull. It can't push. So be careful that what's happening with tension is separate from the acceleration constraints. And again, accelerations and forces are different. So when we go to draw the free body diagram, we get to do that simplification. We don't have to draw a free body diagram for the pulley. We don't have to draw a free body diagram for the rope. So when we look at block A, we have friction. Ooh, this problem has friction. We have the tension in the rope. We have the normal force up and gravity down. Now for the rope, for the block that's hanging, we have gravity down. We don't have a normal force because it's not on a surface. For the same reason, we don't have friction. And now we have that tension up. Now the tension of B on A and the tension of A on B, well, I could just call these, say, tension, right? Because this is the same magnitude of force. But note that here, this is in the positive x hat direction. And in the lower block, this is in the positive y hat direction. So the magnitude is the same, but the direction is different. So please don't just call them the same vector, because vectors have a direction. So writing it this way, or writing it as t, you know, plus x hat, right? I'm just writing the direction specifically outside of it, and then you can say that the magnitudes 
right, that these are the same magnitude, and the reason is because it's an ideal rope. So that's what we're doing here. Again, you want to use the simplification because there is a relationship between the two of these, but please be careful in your notation. Don't set two vectors equal to one another that are not literally equal, which is why it helps to take the direction out explicitly. I now want to go through uh, one example that I think is a little bit tricky because especially if you haven't seen it before, you might not understand what's happening. So in this situation, I have a bunch of tensions shown. And there's a few different ways to interpret this. So the first one is to simply try to figure out how many ropes there are. And this is a bit tricky, and if you're not sure, you should ask for clarification. Because the first thing you might think of is that there's two ropes. What, one answer is that there's not five different ropes. Don't think that. But so you have this rope, right? And note that it's secured to the center of the pulley. So this rope isn't changing in length. It's just supporting this block. But now, let's look at the remaining ropes. This is going around this pulley, right? But then, this goes around this pulley. So the final question is, uh, does that go all the way through? And the answer is no. It's going to stop and be anchored there. This is a separate rope. Why? Imagine that this blue rope was going all the way through. What would be keeping this pulley from falling down? And what we're actually going to do here is draw a free body diagram for the pulley. You normally don't have to do it, but this is one situation where you would want to. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram for this pulley. And the first thing to think about is how many forces do I have acting on it? And I have my ropes acting on it. So I have pulling down on it T2 and T5. You see that, right? So this has gone around. So T5 is pulling down and T2. But now look, T3 is also pulling down. And I make no claim about the relative strength of these yet. All three of these are pulling down. Now, if you claimed that this rope went through it, well, in that case, T3 wouldn't be pulling down. It wouldn't be attached to it. But T2 and T5 are pulling it down, so that whole pulley is just going to fall. See, the only way that this will work is if T4 is separate and pulling it up. So if your thought was this rope goes all the way through, the reason that can't happen is because then nothing would be holding this pulley up. So T4 is physically attached to the pulley, so so must T3 be. So you have three of these down. But now note that in fact, that's all the same rope. So this is actually the same as saying, as always, let me draw my, my coordinate system. And if I wanna just talk about my net force on this pulley, so F net, uh, I'll call this B and I'll call this A. So net force B in the Y direction. Well, I have T4 up. And then let's just call T2 equals T3 equals T5 equals T. Let's just call all of that blue rope T. So this T4 minus 3T equals the mass of my pulley times the acceleration of it, and in a situation that we would say here, it's just not accelerating, it's staying in place, and or the mass is zero, uh, we can say that that's equal to zero. Now that's not actually what we care about. I was just trying to make the point that if you think this rope goes through it, such that T4 and T3 aren't exerting forces on the pulley, uh, that, that pulley is going to fall. So now let's look at pulley A. Right? Okay, so now we have pulley A. I see down, I have T1. Now again, I don't draw the mass directly. I draw what I see on it. And then up, I have T2 
and I have t3, and we can say that each of those is equal to t. So now we have a relationship for f net of a in the y direction, I love subscripts, equals 2t, because again we said that that was 2t plus t3, minus t1. So finally, we're going to do our mass. We have mg down in the y hat, negative y hat, and we have t1 up. So, and technically I should have been putting vectors on all of these, I'm sorry, bad job. Um, so the point is though, we now have a relationship that if we say that this pulley isn't accelerating because it's massless, right? Like if we want to set this equal to zero, either because the mass equals zero or because it is not accelerating, in this case, we now get to say that t, which equaled t2, 3, 5, equals t, equals t1 divided by 2. So this is something that you may have studied in a previous science class or in a physics class is putting a bunch of pulleys together. This is the idea. So part of why I've gone through this is to maybe jog your memory if you've seen this before, that because we have one rope doubled over, you actually have half of the force of gravity supported by each rope, but it's the same rope, so your tension is constant, and it's half of your mg. So what we get to say in the very end is that the tension in the blue rope is equal to the mass of the box times g divided by 2. So the takeaway here was really thinking about tension in a rope and being able to identify from one of these pictures what are independent ropes. In this class, we are not going to do a lot with lots of pulleys and double-backed ropes and all of that. You're going to see that once or twice, but it is not something we're spending much time on. It's an application of thinking about all of these other ideas, but you're still going through Newton's second law, thinking about ideal pulleys and ideal ropes, drawing free body diagrams. That's really the important thing.